This video is brought to you by Skillshare. George Miller was really YouTube's first and biggest anti-hero. There have been others since, but his vlogs pioneered the scene by inverting almost every trope on YouTube. The content of Filthy Frank videos ranges from disgusting to horrifying. He became an internet cult leader with his irreverent, gross-out humor and immersive cast of characters and in-jokes. Filthy Frank was actually my introduction to YouTube. I think he was for a lot of kids. In 2012 and 2013, when he was first blowing up, there was nothing else that had that same sort of shock value as his videos. Watching pink guys scream at people in public was hilarious. But as time went on, George desired to create something more substantial. You guys don't realize that I exist as well, as a, as a human. I, I'm, I'm, there's Frank, there's Pink Guy, there's Salamander Man, there are all these, all these wonderful fuckers living here, but then there's me as well, and people not knowing that I existed and um, that it was just these guys really uh, gave me a lot of stress, you know, uh, because uh, I'm, a, I'm a normal person, just like the rest of you guys. So rather than to let the Filthy Frank brand die slowly, George chose to stop producing comedy videos in 2017, which is when Filthy Frank was arguably still at its peak. In an interview with Billboard, George talked about how he wanted to challenge himself, and making videos as Frank and Pink Guy was just too easy. He felt stuck. George found that his job on YouTube was making him depressed and ill. His vocal cords were possibly damaged from performing Filthy Frank and Pink Guy, he was experiencing stress-induced seizures, and he was even drinking way too much. So his escape plan was simple. He was going to drop some good music. George had always been interested in music, and he even dropped a few Filthy Frank-themed songs throughout the years. His first attempt was a proof of concept. The Pink Season mixtape was a collection of catchy, well-produced tunes written from the perspective of Pink Guy, George's iconic, racist, obnoxious character. The mixtape did really well, peaking at number 70 on the Billboard 200. This is no small feat for a YouTuber whose primary subject matter involves racist jokes and harassing strangers. And then George rebranded himself almost immediately after dropping Pink Season. He put out the music video for World Star Money a month later under the name Joji. It was shockingly different from anything he had put out before. The song and accompanying visuals were about as far removed from Filthy Frank as you could possibly imagine. And his production quality saw a noticeable increase as well. But the biggest change came from the vocals and lyrics. Joji's voice was soft and he was singing about love. Fans of Filthy Frank embraced the songs and other subsequent singles. People were excited to find out what Joji would make next. Filthy Frank ended for good around six months after the release of Pink Season. There was no goodbye video, no final episode, it just stopped. And then two months later, George, now known primarily as Joji, put out his debut EP. In Tongues peaked at number 58 on the Billboard 200 and was received positively. Most interestingly of all, the fans' reaction to Joji's music was unprecedented. Fame is unpredictable, and Joji was taking a massive leap by switching up his style. But his fans loved the new music, and while they lamented the death of Filthy Frank, they were more than ready to embrace whatever came next. People probably wouldn't have been so quick to accept George's new identity if it sucked, but it didn't suck. The brooding down-tempo songs on In Tongues are really well made. Joji wrote and produced the EP himself, proving to the internet that he was far more than just a comedian. Critics praised the melancholic, nostalgic lo-fi production on In Tongues, while sometimes noting its lack of emotional depth. Joji's first studio album, Ballads One, just dropped a few weeks ago. Singles leading up to the album include the viral hit Slow Dancing in the Dark, which I personally loved, and Test Drive. The record is once again produced by Joji, and it's pretty similar to his previous EP. On ballads, Joji works to further develop who and what he is as a songwriter and a producer. He uses heavily textured beats and various small atmospheric samples to create a nostalgic vibe. I think it's safe to say that while the production on ballads is excellent, the songwriting is still a little shaky. The emotional depth of Joji's songwriting often leans towards immaturity. 
And this isn't to say that I don't enjoy his songs, because I do. I just wish that he would try a little harder to explore himself and his lyrics more deeply. But I'm happy to say that I'm pretty sure Joji won't be so melodramatic forever. Lyrics like I don't want to die so young got so much to do on attention hint that Joji has ambitions as of yet unrevealed. Maybe along the same lines as his secret desire to make real music for much of his time portraying Filthy Frank. Joji will soon reveal that he's capable of songwriting and composition that goes above and beyond a satisfying, yet somewhat shallow, participation in current musical trends. This has been Volksgeist. Thank you for watching. While we wait to hear what Joji makes next, I recommend picking up a few new skills on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in graphic design, music production, songwriting, and more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on useful, engaging topics. It's honestly a great way to improve your skills and unlock new opportunities. I personally want to recommend Vastian Katro's abstract poster design class. It's the perfect way to learn some cool-looking, simple techniques in Photoshop. It's the perfect class to get you started on making designs much like the ones I use in my own videos. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer that's just for my viewers. Get two months of Skillshare for free. To sign up, visit the link in the description and get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Act now on the special offer and start learning today.